New details are emerging about Hillary Clinton's personal email server. Today, campaign officials announced the server was set up by a State Department staffer, but the cost was covered by the Clintons. Andy Rose has more right now in America. A Meridian car crash leaves the driver dead and sends another to the hospital. 19-year-old Britiana Vasquez died at the scene while one male passenger was sent to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries and the second passenger was able to go home. Meridian police say the crash happened on Franklin Road shortly after 2 a.m. That crash is still under investigation. Several Caldwell residents woke up this morning to shattered glass. Police say late last night or sometime early this morning, the windows of several vehicles on Arthur, Blaine and Ash streets, as well as 20th Avenue, were shot out with what appears to be a BB gun, causing more than $1,000 in damages. The Caldwell Police Department is asking for the community's help identifying the people responsible for these crimes. If you have any information, please call 343 cops. The spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is in full swing. Hundreds of early risers bundled up this morning to watch nearly 50 balloons take flight over the Treasure Valley. And tonight thousands are attending the spirit of Boise Night Glow. Take a look at that. It's gorgeous out there. You're looking live at Ann Morrison Park at the 24th annual Balloon Classic Night Glow. It's truly something special for the city of Boise to do. Take a look at some of this video that we shot just a little bit ago. That is actually inside one of the hot air balloons they had on display there for a bit earlier today. I know that our own Lacey Darrow was out there. This event may only last a few days, but the preparation takes a team of about 24 people, nearly six months to plan. Being its 24th year, it's a bit easier to get balloons here than when it first began. If you didn't get the chance to make it tonight, they will be back at it tomorrow morning for those early risers and next year will be the 25th year. Supposedly they have some really big things planned. With these cooler temperatures, it is starting to feel like fall out there. So let's check in with meteorologist Adam Beerman for a look at the On Your Side forecast. Hey, Adam. Hey, Lauren. The Treasure Valley is still buzzing about the Broncos' big win over the University of Washington. It was definitely a night Bronco fans will remember for a while. And not only for the ending, fans gave Coach Pete the warm welcome he earned over his time at Boise State. The number 23 Broncos came up with just enough plays to send Coach Pete home with a loss. Running back Jeremy McNichols was the difference maker on offense with two touchdowns in the first half. The University of Washington missed a field goal with less than 30 seconds left on the clock that would have tied things up. After the game, Peterson shared a hug with Coach Harson and also found himself giving hugs to other players he coached just two years ago. Before the big game last night, BSU fans joined the celebration to recognize a local military family for their sacrifices during a very special on-field ceremony at the BSU home opener. Retired Army Specialist Thomas Hopkins, his wife Christina, and their two daughters will be eating well thanks to Eckrich and Albertsons for their surprise recognition of service to our country. Completely and utterly. Temperatures, rain and snow have reduced the intensity and spread of the Idaho wildfires as crews continue to work on the suppression lines. Just 12 miles southeast of McCall, the rapid fire has reached nearly 10,000 acres and is 40% contained. And three miles east of Riggins, the teepee fire is 45% contained after scorching more than 94,000 acres with good progress in containment north of the Salmon River. Down at the area burned by the soda fire, the BLM says they've completed gathering wild horses. Nearly 300 horses were rounded up. Nearly 280,000 acres were burned in the soda fire. Runners and walkers and their dogs started at Fort Boise Park and the nine mile course took them to the top of Shaw Mountain, then back to the starting line. The challenge helps support fire prevention programs in the Treasure Valley. Firefighters say everyone should be aware how they can help prevent those wildfires people took on the challenge with some of the fastest runners completing that nine mile loop in 30 minutes. Labor Day marks the unofficial end of summer and millions of Americans are making the most of this holiday weekend. TripAdvisor asked more than 2,500 people about their Labor Day plans and more than 40% of people asked are traveling this weekend. Just as many plan on shopping, 30% will be at cookouts and 28% will be visiting a park or national park. Sightseeing and hiking are also high on that list. 
At Boise's World Center for Birds of Prey, an effort is taking flight to bring the California condor back from the brink of extinction. On your side's Tammy Scardino joins us in the studio with why their survival means so much to so many. A show dedicated solely to motorcycles rolled into Veterans Memorial Park today. There was no admission fee to get into the Petroliana Boise Motorcycle Show. And bikes came in from the Gem State, Oregon and Washington. Food and beer were a plenty. Custom and vintage bikes sparked plenty of conversations. This is the second year for the event that allows custom and vintage entries alike. Coming up next on Fox 9 on your side, critics continue to question Hillary Clinton's use of a private server for her emails while she was Secretary of State as she provides some answers for its use. And still ahead, news late night host Stephen Colbert does a little verbal sparing with a presidential candidate who will be one of his first guests. Emails sent through Clinton's personal server have retroactively been determined to contain classified information, but it's not clear if those emails were known to be classified at the time they were sent. Meanwhile, Clinton is framing herself as a real fighter for women as she slams Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. Clinton's campaign trail took her to Portsmouth, New Hampshire today, where she took the stage alongside Democratic Senator Jean Shaheen. Shaheen used the event to formally endorse Clinton for the White House. Clinton added her take on the Republican candidates, specifically Donald Trump. Mr. Trump insult. Today marks Senator Shaheen's formal endorsement of Clinton after announcing her support last week. Also hitting the campaign trail in the Granite State, Republican presidential candidate Carly Fiorina campaigned in New Hampshire today. The former Hewlett Packard CEO toured Manchester with the city's mayor. Fiorina isn't the only presidential candidate hoping to woo New Hampshire voters this Labor Day weekend. Eight other candidates are set to swing through the Granite State over the next few days. Supporters are rallying behind an elected Kentucky clerk jailed for refusing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis declined to heed a U.S. Supreme Court order legalizing same-sex marriage. She says the practice is against her religious beliefs. Davis's attorney says Davis has no intention of resigning. Republican presidential candidate Mike Huckabee is planning to visit Davis in jail Tuesday as a show of support in this case of what he calls criminalization of Christianity. More than 55,000 people have signed a petition on Huckabee's campaign website calling for Davis's release. Adams gathering up to the minute weather information. He's back with the complete on your side forecast next and still ahead on Fox 9 severe flooding in Hawaii leads to trouble in paradise between summer and winter and we're certainly seeing that this week Lauren. Yes we are about 87 at the end and as you said a wise man aka meatloaf <laughs> two out of three ain't bad. Exactly. All right thanks Adam. <laughs> A mass migration that's happening across Europe. Thousands who made it to the border between Hungary and into Austria crossed overnight. And there are many more on the way. Fred Plygen is at that border between Hungary and Austria with the latest right now in the world. EU foreign ministers are trying to come up with a unified solution to the crisis. They met today in Luxembourg. The EU foreign policy chief says the group is talking about the problem with both member and non-member countries that migrants are traveling through to reach Western Europe. She says most of the migrants are in fact refugees and Europe has a collective duty to help them. Guinness World Records says Chandra Dengi, the world's shortest man, has died. Born in Nepal, Dengi stood just 21 and a half inches tall. Guinness said he was the shortest person to ever have his height officially verified by the record-keeping publisher. Dengi spent his entire life in a remote mountain village. The doctors never diagnosed his condition, but he was otherwise uh, relatively healthy. It's believed that Dengi was 75 years old. A social media faux pas or diversionary tactic. Authorities don't know for sure, but it looks like the son of the world's most wanted fugitive may have tweeted a clue to the fugitive's whereabouts. Nick Valencia reports. Pediatric cancer cases can take a physical, emotional, as well as a financial toll on the entire family. New York Giants coach Tom Coughlin has created a foundation to help parents deal with those bills. Fox's news doctor Manny Alvarez has more. 
Fall allergy season is fast approaching, and while over-the-counter medications may work best, there are some cures in your cupboard that could help alleviate symptoms. Mold and ragweed can bring on allergies in the fall. Dr. Paul Sharkey says over-the-counter medications are best, but some things in your cupboard may also help. Sharkey says pineapples have an antihistamine effect. Cinnamon and ginger are anti-inflammatory. Local honey is popular as a home remedy, but he thinks it isn't as effective. Be Stephen Colbert is gearing up for his first night as host of The Late Show, but he's already calling out one of his first guests, Republican presidential candidate Jeb Bush. Plus, Sesame Street puts a kid-friendly twist in a popular movie scene. Mary Maloney has the details in today's Hollywood Minute. President Obama honored actress Sally Field and author Stephen King today. The two are among the recipients of this year's National Medal of Arts Awards. The White House is honoring Field for her support for gay rights and public health. They say the actress has shown fearlessness and empathy on screen and off. As for King, his storytelling attracted his honor. The White House noted King's analysis of human nature in his writings and his ability to thrill audiences around the world. Fantasy sports is a multi-billion dollar industry as NFL fans pick their fantasy teams ahead of next week's opening game. A new documentary breaks down the phenomenon. Fox's Will Carr has more. Coming up in sports, Dan Hogg has the latest on the Broncos' big win over the Huskies. Officials in Orlando, Florida are hoping these traps will catch a missing eight foot long king cobra. This, this totally freaks me out. It's it got out of its cage at home on Wednesday. Wildlife officials had no luck finding it so far. Now they've set up traps using dead snakes as bait. Since king cobras feed on other snakes, they hope the runaway will be caught in one of these boxes. King cobra venom is said to be potent enough to kill an elephant. That's why I will not be moving to Florida tomorrow. <laughs> they need Ricky Tiki Tabby, <laughs> the mongoose. I don't know if you're familiar with Ricky Tiki Tabby, Lauren? Nope. That was, that was a <laughs> great, great cartoon when I was a kid about a mongoose that fought cobras. All right, let's take a look at our forecast one last time. Temperatures are going to be warming up as we head through the week. Should be in the mid-80s by Wednesday with lots of sunshine. Looks like a great week. Have a good night, everyone.